Hello, and welcome back to the Monica Talks Football Channel. Today, we're going to continue our October international break previews and predictions with everyone's favorite, or at least one of my favorites, CONCACAF, as you can see by the USA jersey from 2014 World Cup. We had a very interesting September international break in CONCACAF, you know, Jamaica, faltering, top out, I guess, but from the Jamaica fans, they've all that's all they've been screaming about. USA, if USA lost to Honduras, it would have been Greg Berhalter out. Mexico, you know, they didn't look so good, but they got seven points. Canada looking good. Honduras kicking themselves. They didn't win the games. El Salvador need to score a goal. Panama, the surprise. And Costa Rica, we know they're old. But now let's get into the preview and predictions for the October break, because this could be a make or break in the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers. And remember guys, like and subscribe if you're new around here. I will be doing live streams, reviewing each match day, in the next day because i'm in finland and you know it's a 10 hour seven hour time difference so i won't be able to do watch alongs or do live streams right after the matches so the next day then i'll do live streams and let's get into the preview and predictions so guys here are the standings for the concaf as we head into the october matches mexico are on top with seven points canada right behind them the usa as well panama are in fourth so they got the intercontinental playoff spot at the moment costa rica are in fifth honduras el salvador six and seventh they haven't won a game yet and then Jamaica at the bottom with one point as they drew in the last game with Costa Rica. So let's go into the matches and see what kind of matchups we got here because we got some interesting matchups already in the first match day. And the first match we're going to talk about, it is the USA versus Jamaica. Massive matchup for both teams, especially and for both managers, Tapa Whitmore and Greg Berhalter. This match will be played in Austin, the beautiful new Austin Stadium. If you guys haven't seen it, Austin FC, they have beautiful lights, like neon lights, basically, because the logo's green and a whole of other stuff. But that's, I'm going off topic right now. For this matchup, though, the USA and Jamaica, ever since they've been playing a World Cup qualifiers, I don't think Jamaica's ever been the USA in the US. Nope, they have not. So, I mean, obviously, Jamaica have won in Gold Cup and friendlies, but never in a World Cup qualifiers. Now, when I looked at the squad for the USA heading into this matchups, obviously there's no Pulisic, there's no Giovanni Reina. These are going to be big misses, but you got to expect now, Brendan Harrison, Matthew Hoppe, Ricardo Pepe. Ricardo Pepe was basically saved Greg Berhalter's job in the last matchup. He was instrumental in assists and getting the goal. His beautiful header, my God. The guy's only 18 and he's showing that sort of quality. He ain't gonna be at FC Dallas much longer. He might get a move to I rumors to Ajax and sort those sort of clubs, but. And then for Jamaica, you know, they've called up all the English base players like Mikhail Antonio, Jamal Lowe, uh, who else? Daniel Johnson, Ethan Pinock, these sort of guys. So. Jamaica are going to bank on the fact that these English players can all gel together and get some sort of chemistry. And I told you guys before these even started the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers, let's see if all those players, when you put them together, let's see what type of chemistry they have. And we saw when they played against Panama, what happened? They lost 3-0 at home and it looked just like a complete and utter mess. It looked like a hurricane came through the Jamaica national team. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have any sort of game plan, nothing in the midfield. The defense looked all over the place. Panama just took advantage of that and beat them 3-0 convincingly and deservedly because Panama played a really good game then. But for this matchup, um, um, as a U.S. fan, I'm worried about who will be creating the offense for the USA. You got to think Brendan Aronson, he's got to be that sort of player. Let's see if Yunus Musa gets some game time as well. Weston McKinney is back into the squad. Let's see if he gets a start. He's mu He must have learned his lesson from that COVID issue because, my God, if he does that again, he is definitely out of this squad for a very long time because, Weston, you cannot be making those sort of mistakes and breaking COVID rules. Yes, I know you're, on, uh, you're a young player and all that sort of stuff, but... That's going to be my ma main issue with the U.S. squad for these matches in October is who's going to be creating the offense? Who will spark the get the from the midfield spot to the attacking spots? I don't know, really. Like I said, maybe Yunus Musa because he's that sort of cam player. Sometimes, really, he also can play on the wing. Let's see if Brendan Aronson could go maybe in the cam spot. Then you got to think, will he use Jesse Zardes? I mean, he loves Jesse Zardes, Greg Barhalter some u.s fans will ridicule jesse's artist but he's a very good player and then for jamaica it's just about getting some sort of formation sort of some sort of state uh, playing style yes against costa rica was looking better got them quickly on the counter attack 
Uh, I love I love Shamar Nicholson. He's coming back from an injury. He's now got 24 caps for Jamaica and 10 goals. So he's a very key player for them. Let's see if he even starts this game. He might start Mikel Antonio or Andre Gray or these sort of guys. But I think the USA have a better midfield than the Jamaica. I think that's where it's going to be won here. It's not going to be a high scoring game, though. Ethan Pinock is a very good defender. Let's see if he even starts for the Jamaican national team. But I'm going to go. It's going to be a close game. I'm going to go with a 2 0 win here for the USA. It's going to be tough, but I think they got it. I think they got it. Next matchup we have it is Honduras versus Costa Rica. Both of these teams have got to have got to win this match. As I talked about, neither team has won a game. They have drawn two games. Obviously, Costa Rica drawing the first game with Panama 0-0, then losing to Mexico 1-0. Even though they had some good chances in that match, and they just drew with Jamaica 1-1. For Honduras, drew with Canada 1-1 away. Not a bad result. They drew 0-0 with El Salvador away. It was okay. And then the the USA game, they were up 1-0 at the half. And then I don't know what happened to Honduras. They just went absolutely they just went missing. Coito, he changed the formation at halftime and that completely disrupted Honduras' play. They were completely in control. They could have just kept doing what they were doing in the first half and maybe got a draw or maybe squeaked out a 1-0 win or 2-1 win. But instead, Coito, the manager, yeah, I don't know. He just he just effed it up. He effed it up. It's as simple as, simple as. But very interesting for this Honduras squad, Elise is back apparently. He's apparently back. I saw he is been selected into the squad he is a very vital player for this honduras squad and he is a very exciting attacking player for honduras will he make the difference in getting the goals for honduras because they were you know lack, lacking a, a finisher in against canada they had very good chances but they just didn't have a finisher let's see if at least it's going to be that difference for honduras for costa rica i mean uh i mean i really like costa rica they have sh- done some great things especially in the 2014 World Cup, but this squad is aging, and we can tell. You know, Joel Campbell, he's 29. Brian Ruiz is 36. I mean, Duarte is 32. Oviedo is 31. This squad is aging. There's no new young blood coming in for Costa Rica. Will that hamper them in this CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers where it's now grueling? you got three matches in each break. I think a couple of them have two matches, but other than that, squad death is a massive, massive thing here. I think Honduras are going to win this game 2-1. Costa Rica don't usually travel well away from San Jose, Costa Rica. So I think Honduras are going to win this game and get their campaign back on track. The next matchup we have, it is at the Estadio Azteca. It is Mexico, first place against Canada, who are in second place so far. This could get a very interesting matchup. Let's see if Tata Martino is back on... Or actually, sorry, Canada is in third place. Let's see if Tata Martino is back on the sideline. Obviously, he had that surgery, so he wasn't on the sideline for Mexico. Mexican fans can let me know, will he back on the be, be back on the sideline for Mexico? This is very interesting because you know Mexico are going to just keep possession of the ball and dictate play by that. Obviously, Chucky Lozano is going to be back. Raul Jimenez will be back. I don't know about the whole quarantine rules for Italy, and I think maybe if Raul Jimenez is vaccinated, then he doesn't have to quarantine when he goes back to England. So expect these players to play. And with these players playing, especially with Raul Jimenez getting a goal for Wolverhampton Wanderers, giving him confidence, Chucky Lozano has been excellent so far for Napoli. Whether he starts or coming off the bench, he's beautiful goals, especially against Udinese. If you guys haven't seen Chucky Lozano's goal against Udinese, absolute rocket of a goal. Then you got midfield control of Andreas Cuadrado, and Hector Herrera, Edson Alvarez, who's going to be the CDM guy, just the line of defense, basically. Edson Alvarez is good at that sort of position. Obviously, Nestor Arujo is going to be back. A lot of good players for Mexico's squad. And then for Canada, they just got some very good players as well, like I talked about in the previews. Kyle Lorene, Junior Hoylet, Jonathan David, Tayshaun Buchanan, Alfonso Davies, these sort of guys. Playing style-wise, I think this is going to suit Canada very well. They're going to counterattack, but they got great counterattacking players like Tejan Buchanan, Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, Hutchinson, who's just going to hopefully control the midfield for Canada because he's going to have a very tough game against Hector Herrera, Andreas Cuadrado, and these sort of guys. But man, 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 at the Estadio Azteca, not probably the toughest place to play in CONCACAF. not going to lie. Altitude, the crowd, everything about that Estadio Azteca, just the history behind it. This could be a very tough matchup for Canada. This is what I was talking about in my previews. We're going to see how serious this Canada squad is if they want to qualify to the World Cup because they're going to have to travel to these tough CONCACAF areas. Yes, you went away to the USA, but 
they have played in the USA before, but they have not played at the Estadio Azteca, these players. But like I said, I think under the under their manager, John Herdman, who's a very good manager, he's done fantastic things for Canada, whether it was with the women's team before and now with the men's national team, he has done some fantastic things. Let's see if he's going to come into this game a little bit cautious and then hit Mexico on the counterattack, especially with the quick players like I talked about. I think that's what Canada are going to go into this matchup. But it's at the Estadio Azteca. I can only see one winner here. If Canada can get a draw, that would be a fantastic result in my opinion. I don't think Canada has ever beaten Mexico. And obviously, we talked about the Gold Cup. That was complete drama where oh, I can't remember who scored the goal. Was it Hector Herrera? Give me one second, guys, while I quickly check. Yes, it was Hector Herrera who scored in the 99th minute. <laughs> a little bit of drama in that game. But Canada have been Mexico last in the 2000 Gold Cup in extra time. So that was the last time. So Estadio Azteca, I can only see one winner here. I think this is going to give good confidence, though, to Canadian squad. 2-1 winners here for Mexico. I think Mexico will win 2-1. And the last matchup we have, El Salvador versus Panama. El Salvador, just please score a goal. Please, please, please. That's all I ask for. Just please. I mean... They don't have the greatest attacking talent. I mean, Joaquin Rivas, I thought he was going to have a good campaign. He hasn't scored a goal yet. Joshua Perez that does, doesn't really do, do for me. Alex Rodon, who's done quite... I think he got a goal with the Seattle Sounders quite recently. So, But it's got to be better attacking-wise for El Salvador. Let's see if it's going to be better at home. We know Panama, they might just sit back under their manager, Thomas Christensen. Gabriel Torres, I think he's now back with the squad for Panama. Obviously, the experienced striker he is. But I, if I was not mistaken, I think Andre, Andres Andrada is not going to be for the Panama squad. A very key defender for them. But I just got to think that El Salvador got to score a goal. And Panama, they're going to make life difficult for El Salvador. Let's see then at home. It could be a 50-50% ball possession. But I'm going to go with the 1-1 draw here. I think... Panama have started off excellently. Five points in the first couple of games. I think that's a perfect start if you if you would ask any Panama fan. When I thought they would be bottom of the World Cup qualifiers. It could still happen. It might not happen. You know, they made it to the last World Cup. So I'm going to go with the 1-1 draw here between El Salvador and Panama. So that's going to be the first match day for October 8th. Now we move on to October 11th. And it's another big game for Canada and Jamaica in Jamaica. I think Canada are going to win this game, though. They got too much quality for Jamaica. Even These predictions might change. These might change subject to what I see in the October 8th matches, guys. So don't ridicule, ridicule me too much for the October 11th matches or the October 14th matches. I'm just giving you a little quick preview and predictions of the matches. But Jamaica-Canada, I think... Ah, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Jamaica really got to win that game if they lose to the USA away. You got to think that. You really got to think that. And then Top of Whitmore will be under huge, huge pressure to get a result there because if Jamaica lose that, that's their campaign done. It's done. They won't qualify to Qatar. There's no chance then if they lose to Canada and the USA in the first two games in the October break. So, but I think they're going to lose. I think Canada, I said they're going to go to the World Cup if you guys haven't seen my 32 teams predictions, but I'm liking this Canadian squad. I think they got really good attacking players. They have a good philosophy. Their five in the back formation has worked really well under John Herdman. So I'm going to go with the 2-1 win here for Canada. And the next matchup, it's Panama versus USA. Bad, bad memories if you're a USA fan sometimes, man. We sometimes get results in Panama and then sometimes we don't. In the last, last World Cup qualifiers, we got a draw there. Before that, we actually helped Mexico qualify. Actually, Panama have never been the USA in Panama. So what was I was just chatting absolute shake, guys. My my bad, my bad. But if you guys can remember in 2013 World Cup qualifiers, it was the last match day. I think Panama had to beat the USA and Mexico were losing to Costa Rica, but the USA beat Panama and Mexico lost to Costa Rica, which helped Mexico get to the intercontinental playoffs and they eventually beat New Zealand. So had Panama been the USA on that day, Mexico would have missed in the World Cup, which would have been, if you're a USA fan, pretty hilarious. If you're a Mexico fan, the saddest day ever. The saddest day ever. But the USA, they're good away sometimes in CONCACAF, but then sometimes it can be a complete and utter disaster, like when they went away to Costa Rica and was 4-0, which was an absolutely putrid performance. I can still remember that performance to this day, but... I think the USA are going to get on a roll here. Yes, there's no Pulisic and Reina like I talked about, but I'm liking 
Brendan Erickson, how he looks like. Matthew Hoppe just gives his heart for the jersey. Whatever jersey he wears, Mallorca, Schalke, he gives it all. So I like Matthew Hoppe. I'm going to go with the... Mm, uh, I think this could end in a draw, though. Panama are a tough team at home. 1-1 draw between Panama and the USA. Subject to change, though, guys. Like I said, subject to change. And then the other game, Costa Rica versus El Salvador. I think this is going to be... El Salvador don't really travel away well from away from El Salvador. I'm going to go with the 2-1 win here for Costa Rica. The last matchup, Mexico versus Honduras. It's again at the Estadio Azteca. Very tough place to play at. Let's see the last time Honduras beat Mexico in Estadio Azteca 2013 when Mexico were really faltering and almost lost it. Then we know Honduras, they're the draw kings away from home. They don't really do well. They beat Panama in the Gold Cup away, but obviously it was a neutral ground. Other than that, it's been a bit of a struggle for Honduras away from Honduras. So it's going to be a 3-1 win here for Mexico. I think they're going to get good playing style once they finally have confidence in the squad, especially after, you know, September wasn't the greatest playing style for Mexico. So 3-1 win here for Mexico against Honduras. And October 14th, once again, I'm going to repeat myself. Sorry, guys, if I repeat myself, but these are subject to change. What I see in the first two match days, but quickly... USA versus Costa Rica. USA need to get revenge on Costa Rica because if you guys can remember in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers in New Jersey, Costa Rica beat the USA 2-0. And I think that crowd was maybe 75% Costa Rica, 25% USA. It was pretty sad to see from the US perspective. But I think right now, USA, I think they're going to get confidence from that Honduras result away. So 2-1 win here for the USA. Canada versus Panama. And then Canada will win at home 2-1. Then we have Honduras versus Jamaica. I can only see one winner there as well. Honduras play well at home. Jamaica, not so good away from Jamaica, even though what we saw against Panama was 3-0. So Honduras will win, let's say 1-0. I think it'll be a very dodgy match there, 1-0. And then El Salvador versus Mexico. This could be a match where Mexico drop points, especially El Salvador. They're going to be a tough team at home. They drew the first two home games 0-0 against USA and Honduras. So I'm going to go with a 1-1 here between El Salvador and Mexico. But these are my predictions, guys. For at least the first match day, those are my confirmed predictions. And then for the next two, it could they could change. They could definitely change what I see in, in the first match day. So in the comment section down below, guys, let me know what is your predictions for each of the match days, especially for the first match day. We have a lot of intriguing matchups, which could really dictate what we see in the next two days, in the next two match days, excuse me. But if you're new around, remember to subscribe to the channel like the video let's just hope for some great great CONCACAF football because CONCACAF always brings drama so let's hope for that guys and let me know in the comment section down below your predictions for the games all right guys have a beautiful day good luck to everybody's nations in the CONCACAF region have a beautiful day and peace everybody